Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you a book haul for the books that I bought over the past couple of months. So I'm still on my sofa, I'm still being nice and cosy, I really cannot be bothered to stand up today, I've kind of hurt my hip a little bit. So we're just going to chill out here. And like with all my book hauls, these are the books that I think I've acquired in the past couple of months. Some of them I might miss out already, especially if I've read them already and they're featured in a wrap up. Some of them might be repeats with my previous haul, I did vaguely try and check. Um, I thought I did a quite good job of making sure that I hadn't included any I previously had, but I'm not too sure. So we're going to jump in, and I honestly don't know how many books I have, but there's a decent number, so let's do this. The first book I have, um, in fact, a couple of these you might have seen in my series I want to start or finish TBRs I put out. I think about a month ago now. Um, and that is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is book one of a new series from Rebecca Roanhorse. Rebecca Roanhorse's debut novel, I believe, was The Trail of Lightning. She's a Native American author who brings a lot of Native American folklore into her writing. And I believe that is what's happening with this book as well, but don't quote me on that. I don't actually know too much about this one in particular. Um, the back says, A God Will Return When Earth and Sky Converge Under the Black Sun. Sounds kind of cool. I'm here for it. It's good. It's definitely a sci-fi vibe. But I'm not actually too fussed about exactly what happens in this book. I've just really wanted to try this author for a while. And this was the one that was on offer. So that's why I've grabbed it rather than The Trail of Lightning. So I'm excited. I've heard it compared to N.K. Jemisin before. I think this can be really cool. I can't wait to see what she can do. The next one I picked up, which was also actually on offer, it was like a buy one get one half price with that book, is Pine by Francine Toon. This is a gothic thriller and was nominated for a crime debut of the year. It was quite popular last year, I believe, especially around kind of November the spooky season. I heard a few people talking about it and it's about a family who live in a small village surrounded by a pine forest. A girl goes missing and it's something to do with that. Again, similar to Black Sun, I don't know too much, but I heard quite a few people talk Talking about this book before with quite a few rave reviews and I really just wanted a few more horror options on my shelf and I like the idea of this kind of isolated sort of mystery vibe I think this could be really interesting one that my dad has actually lent me is Mary Allingham's uh, hide my eyes Mary Allingham is another writer from the golden age of crime and I would really like to read more from that era in general I've read some Agatha Christie's I like Raymond Chandler I tried Dorothy Sayers did not get on with her writing style at all so this one I think would be good to give a go of my dad really enjoyed it I think my mum might have read it as well and quite liked it but I wouldn't quote me on that um, I don't again know the details of this particular um, book but I know the kind of style of the book that it's in so I'm really intrigued by this one. It's quite an old copy as well, it's very pretty, I'm going to have to be careful with it and make sure my rabbit doesn't eat it. To finish off a trilogy I have The Rosewater Redemption by Tade Thompson. Rosewater is a fantastic trilogy, it's a sci-fi set on our planet but in like the 2050s to 60s. It's about an alien dome that appears and ends up kind of landing in Nigeria and the dome can end up healing people but it also unwakes like sorry like unlocks or awakens um, some kind of psychic powers within some of the kind of local population. Book three, I don't want to go into too much detail off because I don't want to spoil anything, but book one and book two have been fantastic so far. There's a kind of whole plant, freaky plant sci-fi thing going on. I love it when sci-fi and plants mesh. I think they make such good bedfellows. So I desperately want to finish off the series. It is on one of my TBRs for this year. We're excited. A book that I got from my queer book subscription service that I subscribe to with category as books, who will be linked down below, is Upright Women wanted by sarah gailey this is a very short novella and it's about cowboys lesbians and librarians i don't know anything else apart from that but doesn't that sound fun one that i picked up at waitrose i believe actually is uh the pull of the stars by emma donahue this is the author of room but this is actually a historical fiction um and this is set in dublin in the 19 in 1918 and it's about a particular uh, hospital that is trying to treat um, either pregnant or new mothers who have come down with an unusual or unknown flu. I think it might be Spanish flu. It's basically looking at an epidemic. Um, this came out around the time that Covid was really kicking off and I don't know if that made it do better or worse in terms of the market but I really like historical fiction. I do quite like epidemic books and I'm definitely getting to a place where I feel happier to read a lot of them at the moment and I've been meaning to try Emma Donoghue 
so many people have raved about room but it just it doesn't interest me at all but i really wanted to try her writing so this is one that when i saw it for cheap in waitrose i was like well i'm gonna grab that and give that a go Another one that came from my queer subscription service is Sent by Isabel Costello. This is a queer romance. I believe the main character is bi and uh, she is a perfumer and um, she's kind of struggling with her craft. She doesn't really know what she's going in life and then an old flame resurfaces and it's all about kind of that romance kindling and it's set in Paris and Provence. And yeah, I've just, I've heard good things about it and I think it's gonna be really interesting and good fun. And I like the idea of her being a perfumer and sort of exploring the idea of scents um it's something which i've not read much about but i know is kind of has its own little sort of popular subsection on booktube there are some really cool non-fiction books about perfume out there that i've not tried but other people do rave about so i'm intrigued i went to one of my favorite bookstores the other day i was so pleased i haven't been able to go there basically since uh no wait i might have gone with my mum in between lockdowns i'm not a hundred percent certain anymore um so yeah, so basically I went there and it was great and I picked up three non-fiction books, which I think are the next ones in the pile. One of those is The Stopping Places by Damien Labasse. This is a journey through Gypsy Britain. Damien Labasse's family um, is Romany and they um, identify as gypsies and it is talking about gypsy history, but also kind of social connotations and cultural place within Britain because there is definitely a lot of hostile energy towards gypsies. Now this is something which um, I really don't know how I feel about travelers in general, when I was touring with the circus there was a lot of animosity from local groups which definitely made me empathise with people who have that as a full lifestyle and I definitely still have quite a few friends who do tour regularly but equally there are had there have been times where travellers have been in the local area and have been an incredibly stereotypical nuisance that has been something that I've kind of wrestled with in a different different way so I'm thinking that this will be a really eye-opening experience reading this book and it will help me to confront a lot of probably internalized prejudices I have um, about I f how I feel about gypsies and Romney in general. The next book I bought is a history of art book and that is Marks of Opulence the why when and where of western art from a uh, 1000 to 1914 by Colin Platt. The reason why I was particularly interested in this one is one, most of my knowledge about art history comes from pre-Raphaelites forward, so it would definitely be classed as sort of modern art the last 150 to 170 years. So the fact this goes so much further back will be really helpful because that's definitely where I get super shaky when it comes to my art history. But also one of the major things that this book is gonna be focusing on is the relationship between the patron and the artist and how economic factors can really influence what art gets made and what art kind of goes down in history. And it's something which I always enjoy a book that kind of looks at the lens of history and who are the people who are getting to tell history, who are the people getting to decide what goes down in history and what gets con considered to be kind of a classic and has that sort of stamp of approval on it. And I think this will be really, really interesting. So I'm hoping it will both strengthen my knowledge outside of my comfort zone <laughs> of pre-Raphaelite pre and forward, but also really look at some of the economic factors that I don't know much about when it comes to art history beyond like Ruskin and Peggy Guggenheim and that's like my knowledge of patrons completely. <laughs> the final book that I've got in that particular little haul, don't worry not the final book of this book haul, we have plenty to go. I really have gone for it over the past couple of weeks, months, months, it takes me a while to recruit this many. Um, and that is anyway, uh, Life Changing, How Humans Are Altering Life on Earth by Helen Pilcher. We all know a huge fan of paleontology and archaeology on this channel and this one in particular is looking at the various ways that humans have interacted with things on our planet and changed them in some way. Now I read Tamed by Alice Roberts last year in February which looked at the 10 different species that humans have either cultivated or domesticated in some way and this I think is going to be a similar vibe but going more down a kind of genetic route and more of a general look rather than focusing on any particular species as such. So some of the subheadings that we have in here include super salmon, strategic moose, sea monkeys, Darwin's moths and pigs and purple emperors. So I'm super intrigued and I just I really enjoy a, a good book on paleontology so this is another one to add to my shelf. A history book that was incredibly popular last year in the history challenge that I spotted for super cheap at my local market is She Wolves by Helen Castor. This is about the women who ruled England before Elizabeth and it focuses on I believe it's three particular queens so we have Matilda oh no four Matilda Eleanor of Aquitaine Isabella of France and Margaret of Anjou 
and I am really, really excited about this. The only one of those that I know anything about is Eleanor of Aquitaine, who's one of my favourite people from history. I read a trilogy that was technically historical fiction, but incredibly closely matched to her life um, last year by Elizabeth Chadwick that was great. So I'm super interested to read a non-fiction book that has a bit about her, but also a bunch of other cool queens. I love learning about monarchy and like badass women in history in general, and also how we write about women and how we think about women and women in the monarchy and sort of women who were bucking trends at the time and had power and how they had to kind of keep it and use it and how they also like didn't have power in lots of ways like Eleanor had a lot of power through her life but her husband definitely um imprisoned her for like 15 years and so she was really limited to what she could do in certain ways so this was actually um also had a tv series it might have been a bbc series on it as well and Helena, Helen Caster is supposed to be a fairly well-known history writer so I think this could be a cheeky one for the history challenge unless I actually prioritise stuff already on my shelf but yeah I'm really excited about this. I was so psyched what I found at the market. A total spare of the moment one whose author's name I've not looked up which I'm gonna butcher this I'm so sorry in advance this is Baba Yaga Laid an Egg by Dubravka Yogres Ugrasic, I believe, uh, translated by from Croatian by Ellen Elias Bersak, Celia Horsworth, and Mark Thompson. Many translators involved in this. And uh, Babi Yaga is a um, sort of character in Russian slash Eastern European folklore. Um, she rides around, she's like an old crone slash witch and rides around on a house that is on chicken legs, I believe. Um, so she's one that kind of features in lots of different stories in different ways. And um, this one is, I think, specifically a story from Baba Yaga's perspective and kind of giving her a voice. So um, yeah, I'm really here for this. I like reading translated fiction. I've not read translated fiction from Eastern Europe in quite a while, especially not more of a modern one. I've read a couple of Russian classics, but this would be really good to try and jump into. And I just saw it in the bookstore and it was a real spare of the moment thing where I was like, I wanna read more about East European folklore. This looks fab. So I'm hoping it's gonna be a good one. I've, ne I've never seen it talked about on booktube at all. So if you've read this book, please do let me know. We keep going, there's still more. I'm like, seriously went for it. <laughs> Um, so uh, a book that I picked up recently is Threads of Life by Claire Hunter. This is a history of the world through the eye of a needle and I read The Golden Thread last year by Cassia St. Clair that is a look at history of fabric and fabric craft. This one however is specifically looking at how fabric and thread and sort of craft involving fabric and thread in general have been used in various kind of political stands over the time and over the years. So it covers things like political propaganda in medieval France to secret treasons in Tudor England from the mothers of the disappeared in Argentina to First World War soldiers with PTSD. From a prisoner of war camp in Singapore to a family attic in Scotland. It is a global chronicle of identity, protest, memory and politics and it's not that just sound freaking fantastic. I think this was actually recommended by several people when I read The Golden Thread and I put out a video about books about fabric craft and then showed my embroidery collection. I'll like tag that video up here somewhere if you wanna go check it out. It's quite a fun video to be honest. So a few people mentioned this one. I saw it in a bookstore and was like, fab, I'm getting it. Also, this cover is the best. Like it's just the best. I'm so happy with it. And we keep going. So this one may have made it into a different haul and if I've doubled up, I humbly apologize. But that is Inheritors of the Earth by Chris D. Thomas. And this is how nature is thriving in the age of extinction. And it's specifically looking at the various um, species of both animal and plant that are basically just doing incredibly well and finding weird, funky new niches in a world that is we are hell bent on destroying at the moment. And I thought it'd be really nice to read a book that was just a little bit more um, positive about the climate change situation which we all know is terrible the ocean is on fire potentially at the moment still but has been for the past day or two but this is about something that is a little bit more cheerful um i really like nature writing and this just seemed perfect it was one that i actually sort of was on my radar for springathon last year and again i saw it in the bookstore and was like fab it's finally out in paperback let's grab it there was a lot of like finally seeing books that i had my eye on in hardback in paperback and grabbing a hold of them the last one on my list that is in physical form but i do have some audiobooks and ebooks to talk about because i always forget to mention them in 
book hauls so I wanted to do them justice um, and the last book that was um, of my queer subscription service um, that makes it sound like queers are delivered to your house queer book subscription service um, for this particular stint anyway is and the band played on politics people and the AIDS epidemic by Randy Schultz this one features a lot on a lot of recommendations lists if you're interested in queer nonfiction and queer history. Um, it is specifically looking at the AIDS epidemic and how it was handled. I think it actually goes day by day, so it's supposed to be quite intense. The font is incredibly small, it's incredibly big as a book, it's going to take me a really long time to get through it. I'm thinking it might be one for the history challenge, but I might have to start it a couple of weeks early, maybe even sometime soon to be able to try and actually finish it by the end of August, just because I think it's going to be harrowing and emotional and ruinous because it's about the AIDS epidemic um so yeah but incredibly important to learn about so and I've heard really good things about it in terms of like the depth of information it goes to so we now got to confront my list that I have on my computer for other books that I bought which means you're gonna get this god-awful glow okay I picked up The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rothy on audiobook um, this is an historical fiction set in the 1970s in a tiny Caribbean village and it focuses on a fisherman and some kind of mermaid um, I like mermaid stories in general and I know that um, the mermaid folklore and sort of myth is incredibly important within black culture so I read The Deep last year really really enjoyed that this has kind of been on my radar since then I also have heard that the book is told um, a lot in dialect and that will work hopefully really well in audiobook form so I'm excited it's quite a short book I think it technically is a novella it's only like 180 pages so I'm hoping to get to that one quite soon uh, I also picked up Koshland by Christopher Leonard this is a non-fiction about the Kosh empire yeah they're like a big corporate power and they're like a private company it's specifically looking at how they got so big so I'm assuming it's going to be terrible and corrupt and going to be a lot of like capitalism is bad a lot of politics as well in it. Um, this was, I think, featured on the long list for the Butchu Prize maybe last year and sort of pulled up. It's not generally something I would actually like to read about normally, but it is something which, having now like listened to some of the books on like white collar crime, sorry, some of the podcast episodes on white collar crime through um, You're Wrong About the podcast, I'm kind of interested in checking out this area a little bit more. It's something that I don't know much about, so I'd like to kind of learn a little bit more, even though I think it is going to piss me off massively. Uh, but we shall see. And then uh, Amazon got me on a massive ebook sale. So I think I picked up seven or eight books literally like last night or the day before um, just because they had a sale and these things were 99p. So I've gone a little bit crazy, so let's do this. Uh, there's The Switch by Beth O'Leary which is a, a contemporary romance I believe and I think it's a um, maybe like a an niece and aunt or great aunt perhaps like swap flats and then both end up having some kind of lovely um, sort of torrid romance. Uh, Beth O'Leary wrote The Flat Share that I really enjoyed it's one of my favourite contemporary romances and this is just basically her latest one so I figured I'd pick it up given it was so cheap. I also have In Black and White by Alexandra Wilson who is a judge I believe for um, the British justice system and she's also black and it's about her experiences um, in terms of like how the British justice system works and kind of the discrimination that she has seen and also experienced herself and sort of her opinions about our criminal justice system in general. I have read a little bit about the British justice system through uh, The Secret Barrister, which I read a couple of years ago and really enjoyed. I want to read his new one, Fake Law, sometime soon, but I thought that this would be good to give a little bit more of a like direct human experience and also is more directly um, addressing race differences with how um, Britain kind of handles its criminal justice system, which I think would be really interesting. I also have The Coming of the Wolf by Elizabeth Chadwick, which is the prequel to her Wild Hunt series. It's a historical fiction of some sort. I mentioned Elizabeth Chadwick earlier. She was the one who wrote the Eleanor of Aquitaine trilogy. I loved those books so much and I kept meaning to get another one of hers to check it out. So when this popped up for sale, I don't think you need to know anything about the original books to be able to read this prequel and frankly I don't care so I'm just going to enjoy some historical fiction. I think she writes fairly old historical fiction so we're probably talking like 1200s I think it's something to do with the Norman Conquest. So she goes a bit more old school than a lot of the historical fiction I tend to read. Then I have The Prenup by Lauren Lane. This is another fun quirky rom-com and it's about two people who got married mainly for convenience 
like green card and I think an inheritance issue and then they want to get a divorce but part of the prenup is they have to live together for three months before they can actually get divorced and does that not just remind you of the movie What Happens in Vegas with Cameron Diaz and Ashton Kutcher in it which is one of my favourite movies I think it's hilarious so I definitely want to read this I hope it lives up to my own hype in my head I think this can be really fun uh, I picked up The Songbook of Benny Lament by Amy Harmon which I believe is a historical fiction set in the jazz age yeah it's New York in the 19th 60s it is a, Br a Bronx piano man it is about a woman with a gorgeous voice it's just about music industry in general and love I love books that feature performing arts at their heart I read uh, The Half Blood Blues which was about uh, blues music and World War II I think I read that last year really enjoyed it so I'm kind of looking for another one that's gonna be similar-ish I think um, so yeah definitely super excited to get to that one uh, then I have The Book of Echoes by Rosanna Amaka. This one, all the covers I've seen for these for this particular book are stunning. So this one, again, is another historical fiction and it is um, set in 1981 and it is about uh, a gentleman, a black young black man who is being, who might end up in jail for a crime he did not commit and thousands of miles away, a village girl abandons her orange store for a chance to work as a maid and um basically it's about their their journeys coming together and colliding i'm not 100 percent certain i have just heard good things about this one and i think it's a bit of a cover buy it's been on my want to reads for a while and i can't actually remember what particularly has has called for this one to be on there but i'm i'm here for it i like historical fiction i picked up gulp by mary roach mary roach is a fantastic non-fiction writer she's one of my favorite authors and this is i think the last one of hers i need to read unless she's come out with something more recently that i just missed on the grapevine and um, this one is specifically about the science of our stomach or gastrointestinal tract in general um, and it's just gonna be lots of individual chapters dedicated to a different area of science about this particular thing that's what she does she just kind of picks a cool area like um I've read ones from her about like space travel and about like army science and about like what do we do with cadavers she does some really cool stuff once I've read this I'm going to do a video dedicated to all of her stuff and kind of rank them as such in some ways then I also picked up Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston this is a story of uh I think America's last slave I believe and Zora Neale Hurston is a very big writer in the black community um a classic writer I think this book was published quite a while ago it's been on my list for a while I want to check out her and also I wanted to read more about um black history in America and also it's kind of perfect for a couple of prompts in the history challenge and it was only a pound so it was like so many wins all in one go so I picked this one up really excited for it and then the final book that I picked up is The Dark Archive by Genevieve Cogman, which is actually book seven of her Invisible Library series. I'm on book four? Five? Four or five? Can't remember which. But I do intend to finish off the series as a whole. Book seven is the last one, and I was like, it's 99 pence. I'm clearly going to get it even though I'm not there yet with it because it's so cheap. So I have that one. It's like a funky fantasy series about parallel worlds and books. Um, I can't be bothered to explain any more than that because that is the last book of this entire video. So yeah, wow, that took ages. Um, I don't know quite how or when that happened and how I got that many books and now my throat kind of hurts and I'm a bit croaky. So I'm gonna go drink some wine and uh, chill out and rest my hip and maybe have a soak in the tub and read a bit. So let me know, where do you think I should start? Um, how did this get so out of control? I might put myself on a bit of a book buying ban until I can get my unread TBR down to like 160 books. It was on 170 and I felt quite pleased and then the Amazon thing happened. So I think if I can hold off on buying any more new books until I get to 160 I'll feel pretty good about myself which means there probably won't be a haul for a while. But I say that, it's clearly not going to happen, I'm just going to completely lose control. So yes, anyway, I'm going, that's what I'm doing. Uh, have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.